Okay, so now we move on to building the Lynx browser. So let's go back to home, do control F and type in Lynx to find out where that is. As I said in the introduction, there are two Lynx web browsers, one spelled L-I-N-K-S and the one I use L-Y-N-X. Uh, if you wish to use the other one, more than welcome. I'm not sure what dependencies it has. Um, it's not got too many but the looks of it. Um, right, that, that actually does require GPM, so that's quite interesting. Oh, that's in graphics mode, sorry. So obviously Lynx works in graphics mode as well as um, text mode. Lynx with an X, L-Y-N-X, is pure text mode as far as I'm aware. And as you can see, there's some optional packages there. Again, I'm going to make a note of links to reinstall this when these other packages have been installed. I'm just going to get it to install as a basic browser for the moment. Hopefully, without these optional components, it will be sufficient to, to fulfill our needs for now. So just noting that down. Okay, and let's now fetch that package. So wget once more. This time it's an HTTPS uh, protocol, and you'll see something behaving a bit differently now because this is a secure URL. Um, when we try to download it, invisible hyphen mirror dot net forward slash archives forward slash links forward slash tarballs forward slash links 2.8.9 rel1 sorry rel.1.tar.bz2 so let's just check this use the right mouse uh, so https colon forward slash forward slash invisible dash mirror dot net forward slash archives forward slash links forward slash tarballs forward slash, forward slash links 2.8.9 rel.1.tar.bz dot dot tar dot and you'll also know this uh, there's no F, uh, w, ftp uh, option here so again we would we wouldn't have been able to download this purely with uh, FTP, we, we, we've again needed wget to get us out of this fix. But as you'll see now, we're starting to build up things. We'll be making uh, other things more accessible, uh, things a little bit more easier to to get further into the build process. So, yeah, because this is a HTTPS, it's saying that it's unable to locally verify the issuer's authority and that's because we haven't got any certificates. So we need to tell, no, no, we haven't got any certificates installed. We need to tell wget not to bother checking for certificates. And as you can see, to do that, we type in this, this uh, command here, this switch. So we can, oh, once again, I've done the wrong mouse. We can use our new GPM mouse and double click that, Left double left click it, and it highlights the whole of the switch, everything we need. We can right click and paste that in without, without having to type it in and without therefore potentially making a typing mistake. Press enter and now you can see it's downloading. And there it is, it's downloaded. Quickly do an MD5 checksum. So it starts 4431. Yeah, it starts 4431, ends in BEF 79. That's fine. So let's extract it. And we can start building. Well, so we've got quite a big config command. So again, take it easy. Use tab where you can to help reduce errors. Oops, no, I didn't want to do that. I pressed enter instead of uh, backspace I was going to do, I think. 
So I'm, what I'm actually going to do here, I didn't want to run the config command. I'm just going to delete the uh, links directory and re-extract it. So I'm not risking anything that I've done by running that config command incorrectly and running it early. Okay, there's always space here. So minus minus prefix equals four slash user space minus minus sysconf duh equals four slash etc four slash links minus minus data duh equals four slash user share doc links dash two dot eight dot nine rel dot one Right now, because I'm nearing the end of the uh, line here, I am actually going to start on a new line to save a wrap around because it can make it a little bit difficult to read some of these switches sometimes. So uh, I'm just going to put a backslash in there, press enter, and it'll allow me to carry on typing in the command. So with zlib, with bzlib, with SSL, with screen equal anchor curses W, enable locale char set. So once again, just go down, have a look at the command explanation, see if there's anything else in here that I might need to add. So the enable NLS might be a good one. Switch allows to print translated messages such as questions about cookies and SSL certificates. So I'll put that one in as well. Um, there's a chance this might break something because we're not putting any of these dependencies in. But I don't think any of these other packages are part of the NLS. And if you're using GNU TLS, then you can use that instead of the way with SSL, but I'm not. So that's all I'll be using. So let's just double check the command again. Configure equals, uh, sorry, configure minus minus prefix equals user. Sysconf dir equals four slash etc four slash links. Data dir equals four slash user share doc links dash two dot eight dot nine rel dot one with zlib, with bzlib, with ssl, with dash screen equals n curses w, enable locale char set, and I've added on this enable nns. Like I say, if there's a failure, then it's probably going to be because of this nls, but let's see when we configure and make. Well, the configure seems to have worked okay. There's no confirmation of what it's going to do, but not to worry. Let's uh, build it. Make minus J4. Okay, it's built successfully and it says welcome to links, which is nice. So we can install it now with this command here, make install full. That's okay. And then we've got this change group command to put in. So chgrp minus v minus capital R root full slash user share doc links links doc so I'm quite confident this is correct because I tabbed most of that so it must be something that exists I've just got to check this chug group minus v minus capital R root yep that's fine 
and that seems to have worked fine. So it says here about configuring it, there's a configuration file and there's some changes here. It says the proper way to get display character set is to examine the current locale. However, Lynx does not do this by default as a root user changes settings. So let's put this said command in. Now you'll notice there's some spaces here and they're within this string that's sent to the E command of said. So this is important that we get the number of spaces correct. Now you can find that out by looking at the characters below and you'll see that these two forward slashes line up and that A and C lines up. So everything in between is a space. So all you need to do is count the number of characters that are underneath. So it's L, Y, N, X, full stop. That's five spaces in that, that area there. So that's important that we put that in exactly right. It's one of the few times where spaces do matter because it's inside a, a quoted, quoted string. So let's type that in said minus E space single quote forward slash hash locale in capitals forward slash then our five spaces one two three four five little a another space then locale underscore char set colon true all in capitals close the quotes then the spaces doesn't matter after this because it's just a continuation of the line. I'm just going to put a space in minus i forward slash etc links links.conf. So I just double check this string. Said minus e quote forward slash hash locale in capitals forward slash, let's just count the characters above, one, two, three, four, five spaces, little a, one space, locale underscore, char set in capitals, colon, true capitals, single quote, space minus i, space etc, links, links.cfg, and that's done that. Then there's a bit about multi-byte characters, um, Myself, manifests itself this problem in multiple locales, easy the backspace key not will raising non ASCII characters properly and there's incorrect data being sent to the network with one of its contents of text areas. Um, only solution is to configure links to use an external to bounce the control X E key combination by default, still as a root user, add this command. So said minus E single quote forward slash hash default underscore ed in capitals forward slash space a space default underscore editor colon phi close quote minus i forward slash etc links links.cfg so again let's chuck that said minus e single quote hash default underscore ed in capitals four slash space a space default underscore editor colon phi single quote minus i etc links links config that's fine then there's a change here to allow links to save cookies between sessions um, if you don't want to do that, then just leave this out, but you probably do want to. It gets quite annoying with links continually asking you if you want to uh, save a, a cookie or not. So, said minus E, single quote, forward slash, hash, persist, forward slash. Again, we've got a group of spaces. Let's just count them. There's one, two, three. There's four spaces there this time. You can see it's just under the, the L is underneath that forward slash, the Y is under a space, N, X, full stop is under a space, but the C in config is under the A, so it's just one, two, three, four, uh, spaces, one, two, three, four, little a, space, persistent, persistent, underscore, cookies 
capitals, colon, true, single quote, space, minus I, full slash etc, links, links.cfg. Um, and it looks like this layout of these uh, configuration options, uh, you can see the little A is all in a column, so that's probably a good indication that you're actually typing in the number of spaces correctly. So that's worth checking for. So just check the spelling of this now. Z minus E, full slash hash persist, full slash, got four spaces, one, two, three, four, little a space, persistent, cookies, colon, true, minus I, etc, links, links.config, press enter. So that's that. So we now have a browser and a method of copying and pasting from that browser. So I'm going to just click on this screen to get rid of the browser for the uh, Firefox I've got at the moment, just so I can see the full screen. I'm going to run links, and you can run it either by running it on its own. Okay, we're getting an SSL error because uh, it can't check the certificates. We haven't got the certificates installed, so let's do yes to continue. Um, and you press G to go to a URL or you can if I press Q to quit, yes I want to quit or you can type links and the web address that you want to go to so for example Linux from scratch dot org and you can see it's taking me straight to the Linux from scratch site. To navigate around you use you can use spacebar to move a page at a time um, and you can use the arrows uh, for the right hand arrow will take you into the link that's highlighted so for example if I highlight BLFS and press right arrow it's taking me to the BLFS page and you can see that by this um, Beyond Linux and Scratch title the up and down arrow move the cursor up and down and the left hand arrow takes you back to the previous page that you came from so it's quite quite logical um, you can see a history of websites you've list, uh, visited by pressing the backspace button um, and that's <laughs> near enough the limit of my knowledge of links I've, I've very rarely use it now it's only for getting me out of sticky situations like this uh, but generally, yeah, you can highlight the link that you want to go to. They're highlighted in yellow. The links are in green. And you can press the right arrow. You can press enter to actually select that link. When you're on a link that's actually a download, so if I do go to read online and select the uh, BLFS, there it is, the latest release of the book. So here's the book we've just been reading in Firefox. If I go into... For example, make CA. This is one of the first packages we'll be building when we do start building packages. Um, you'll see here is oops. Here is the link currently highlighted in yellow for the make CA package. And if I press enter on that, instead of um, obviously going to a web page, it's trying to download it. It says there's an SSL error. Do you want to continue? Yes. There's a cookie. Do you want to allow it? yes or no, it doesn't matter, so I've rejected it, I'm just going to reject these ones for the time being, and these are the questions you keep asking if you don't accept them, it won't store them, and now it's asking me to download, so you can see that's how you download files, and it will by default download into the current directory that you're in, so because I'm in sources, if I was to download this now, it will download into the sources BLFS directory, so for now I'll do cancel, and also just demonstrate um, the copying and pasting so you can see that um, you've got to be careful the bits that you copy and paste so for example there's the make and install command there um, let's go back uh, yeah there isn't a configure is there because of this so you can see that the text here is in the same color as the commands that we type in so it's difficult to read 
um, the you know to look for the actual commands you've got to type in. You've got to read very carefully. So when I go through this building, I will keep the um, Linux, the Firefox browser up, um, as it'll be easier to identify what commands to type in. But when you come to do it, if you, if you're unable to do this with a browser, which I doubt if you will be able to, unless you have another machine next to the one you're building, um, you do need to be careful which bits you copy. Uh, if I go to the equivalent on here, you can see the difference. So the make install, so you see this bit's in a nice grey box and it's in bold and it's in a different font, so it's obvious, but Lynx, unfortunately, is unable to render that. Um, even this uh, uh, this config file here for the cron files, it's uh, you can see the install commands in black and white. The cat command is in black and white. The bits are in bold, but the bit that's not in bold has actually come up as a different color text. So that bit stands out, but the rest of it doesn't. So again, I'll, I'll probably be keeping this up just to quickly identify which bits I need to copy with this mouse. To paste in so you can see I've I've pasted this uh, copied this here and I'm it's ready to paste but well obviously where do I paste it now I've got this browser up well the thing we need to do is we need to open up another console and by default uh, you're given six consoles and they're accessible by using alt f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 x f6 so we're on the first console at the moment Alt f1 so if you if you were to press Alt F1 now, nothing would happen because that's that's the console we're on. If I press Alt F2, you notice we've now gone to a different console and it's waiting for a login. If I press Alt F1 again, I've gone back to my original console that we booted on. So you can see that if I go back to another console, I've gone back to console 2. If I log in as the root user, I've got another prompt, but do Alt F1. I've still got links up. So this is how we're going to be copying from one terminal to another. We're effectively on the same physical terminal, but we've just got several, i.e. six virtual terminals, six virtual consoles. So I've highlighted that. I can go to F2. I can paste it in with a right click, and you can see I've copied that command. So that's how now we've got A, the book accessible through a browser, and B, we can copy and paste commands using GPM. So in the next video, I'll be beginning with a configuration. We'll make some configuration to the system to turn it into a bit more of a up-to-date system. We'll be creating a normal user. Uh, we'll be making some modifications to the startup files, a little bit of customization. Um, looking at things like yeah there's some firmware to install if you've got a problem with your network adapter for example it may be that there's some firmware that you need to install um, so I'll be showing you how to do that how to install that because I need to install although my video is working fine um, it does actually need a bit of firmware to enable the best best performance out of it so I'll be going through that showing you how how to do that but for now you can hopefully see how we're going to progress with building uh, beyond Linux from scratch. So I'll see you in the next video and thank you very much for watching. Goodbye for now.